Hello and welcome to my tips and tricks video. I'm Andrew Winburn and the topic we're going to discuss today is going to be rechucking using a Swiss machine. So when is this going to be necessary? When machining parts that exceed the distance between the main spindle home position and the guide bushing, otherwise known as the z-axis stroke, rechucking is going to be required. So there's two different ways that you can program this in the spree and I'm going to start with the more common one. So this is going to be using the cell spindle to hold the stock in place while the main spindle opens, retreats, and closes. So to set this up, I'm going to start by making a pickup operation. I'll go up to machining at the top, down a solid turn, and I'm going to choose pickup. Once in here, I'm going to system default all just to clear everything back to the defaults, and then I'll call this pickup. Spindle name, I'm going to set this to sub spindle since that's actually the spindle doing the picking up of the part. Head ID, this needs to match whatever head uh, controls the cell spindle z-axis, and this is usually going to be the last head. And then I'm going to set some feeds and speeds here. Next, I'll set my Z position uh, as to where the spindle is actually going to pick up the part. And this position is going to be relative to the Esprit origin here. Then I need to set a clearance value. And this is going to be relative to that position that I have set. Basically, where do you want to, to wrap it the collets to before it starts to feed onto that position? Dwell time. So now I'm going to enter in however long it takes for the collets to open and close. And then after that, I'll be done and I can click OK to apply this one. Next thing I need to make is going to be a bar pull. So I'm going to go up to machining at the top, go down a solid turn, and I'm going to choose bar feed. And then I'm going to system default all on this one, clear everything back to the defaults again, and I'm going to call this one bar pull. I'm going to change my bar feed type to by spindle. <coughs> bar feed spindle name here, I'm going to set to sub spindle since that's technically the one that's, that's uh, pulling the part. And then I'm going to just match my feeds and speeds to my previous operation. And then I'll drop down to the bar feed tab. So on here, I need to make sure that my Z position is going to match exactly what I have set in my pickup operation. Otherwise, that's going to result in incorrect simulation. I'm going to set my feed length and reposition distance to however much I want the rechuck amount to be. And then dwell time. Again, I'm going to set that to however long it takes my collars to open and close. And then I'll click OK and apply it. Last thing, I'm going to make a sub spindle home operation by going up to machining down a solid turn and then choosing release. Once here I'm a system default all. I'll call the operation sub home. Since I'm sending the sub home I'm going to change the spindle name to sub. I'll change the head to head two here and then everything else I'll leave defaulted and click OK. At this point I can go ahead and change over to my operations tab and now what I'll need to do is make sure I have sync lines in place to make sure that everything is going to run properly. So I'm going to left click my last turning operation here once. I'm going to left click and drag the bottom half of that operation over to the right hand column. And I'm going to bring my mouse up just above the pickup cycle. As soon as I see that red line above the pickup cycle, I'll let go of my left mouse click and that'll drop my first sync line in place. Now I need to make a sync under the pickup operation and then over the bar pool. So I'm going to left click my pickup operation once. I'm going to left click and drag the bottom half of it over to the left hand column. And I just want to make sure that I've got this red line on that sync line but facing up. And I'm going to drop that sync line in place there. And I'll do the same thing with the bar pull and sub home. Left click on my bar pull operation. Left click and drag the bottom half of it over to the right. And then I'm going to bring that red line right here and then I'm going to let go of my left mouse click and drop that in place. So now I should run all of my primary turning operations, pick up the part, main spindle should retreat, and then the cell spindle will go home. This is not the more common method of programming this. Um, the rechuck using the cell spindle, you may want to leave your sub on the part longer and then home it later on. So if that's the case, you can take out this home. You don't even need to program the home operation and you can just program that later down the line. So now if I run my simulation, I should do all my primary turning first. And then we'll see our cell spindle come over, pick up the part, main spindle will retreat, and then the cell spindle will go home. 
So that's how we set up a rechuck using the sub spindle. The next, um, the next type of rechuck I'll show you is going to be a tool rechuck. So let me open up that file here. So in what cases would we want to rechuck using a tool? This is typically going to be, be, uh, be because the sub spindle collet is too large to grip the area near the front of a part that you would typically need to hold on to for rechucking with the sub spindle. Also, some people like to do this just for cycle time so that the sub can continue to do work while we're rechucking. So now I've got my tool rechuck file open. I'll show you how to set that up for a tool. There's going to be an external macro that you'll have to run in order to actually set up tool rechucks. And if you need any help looking for that, you can get in contact with our tech support team and they can get you all set up. So now I'm, I'm ready to run my uh, tool rechuck macro. I've already done all of my primary turning. So I'm going to go up to tools at the top. I'll go down to macro and then I'm going to choose macros. Once I get here, I'll choose my tool rechuck macro and hit run. And that'll open up my tool rechuck window. So here I can set my rechuck amount what I want my feed rate to be, and if I enter it in as zero, then it's just gonna wrap it. Dwell time, again, that's gonna be how long it takes the collets to open and close, and then I can make an operation name here at the end. Once I click OK, that should generate my rechuck operation. So now I'm just gonna make one more turning operation to follow that up. Open this process over my next feature. So now I should have all my primary turning, have a rechuck operation, and then my next turning operation from there. So now when I run all of this, you should get all the way to the rechuck, and then you should see the tool stay in place. The main spindle is going to retreat, and then the turning will continue from there with that next turning operation I made. And that's it. That's all it takes to program a rechuck using a tool. So that's today's tip. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and share this video. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.